The Brother in Telefax 620. This is an old thermal fax machine that somebody gave me. And uh, you can see it's got the roll of thermal paper in it. Actual handset. It's actually got some weight to it. A lot of times I've seen it's unfortunately missing one of the little rubber things, but I've seen uh, sometimes they actually just put metal weights in that just to make it actually feel like it's something. Because I'm sure it's made in China, although I haven't checked yet. I will find out for you. It shows you how to put the paper in there, and your control panel is here, and that might pop up somehow. There might be some releases for it, I don't even know. I haven't really looked. That's probably not a good design right there. But anyway, let's fire this thing up. I gotta plug it in, and then it will have to initialize. So what we get here is just a little cutoff, just because they can, so that way it'll waste paper. And then over here, uh, it just says power failure report, and you lost the activity report. Big friggin' deal. You can hit the help button, which is also a stupid design, by the way, it is 1995 all over again. You can hit the help button to waste more paper. You know, something falls on it, some crap like that and you end up wasting an entire sheet of paper. But it does print, and it will copy if you stick something in the thing. I have tested that. But uh, I have some other plans for this thing, and uh, we're going to get to that in a second as soon as this finishes here. It's got an automatic cutter, and you see the curly fax paper, and this is basically just the, the menu in it and how you can get around this stuff, and make it do that. But over here I have an equally ancient, although maybe not quite as old, laptop that somebody had given me. Uh, this had the old school three pin Dell power supply. Uh, I don't have that kind so I rigged up my own uh, just using a piece of... Um, these wires were actually from uh, like a desktop machine that you'd stick on the pins on the board. They happen to fit on the uh, connector so I just hot glued them in and uh, in here is uh, the wires just wrapped up. I made them longer than I needed. And I got a jack here, a barrel connector. And this adapter is from, I think, a sharp camcorder, but it happens to be the 19 volts it needs. So let's see if we can open this and see if it'll fire up. I don't even know the last time I used it, but it's been quite a while. I know the backlight tubes in it are getting uh, kind of old uh, because it will have a red glow when it fires up. It allegedly is trying to charge the battery as such with the flashing green light, but let's see what happens here. There you are. She comes up, and you can see the discoloration right there, but that actually goes away once it warms up. That was actually a floppy drive, yes. And she sounds like she's crunching away. And there we go. I'll let her boot up, and then we'll see if we can get these two machines to talk to each other. In China? No, no. Made in bad Asia, just like it says there. Just like my camera. Okay, it's booted up. A few moments later, you can still see the discoloration there, but again, that will go away once the tubes have fully warmed up. Uh, this is currently running an Intel Wireless B network card because uh, it has to be, for this machine, a, uh, a PCMCIA non-card bus style, um, I believe. Uh, well, this may actually take card bus, I forget. It's a P3 600. Uh, it was designed for Windows 2000 or Windows 98. I got some updates to do, so I'm going to do those, because, uh, like I said, I don't remember the last time this thing has been booted. So I'll do that and get the telephone cable I need and see if we get them to talk. I do this on a regular basis. I climb inside the wind. Uh oh. Oh, you saw me. Oh dear. In case anybody's interested, this can almost play YouTube at 244 
or 240p. Uh, this is my uh, adjusting the uh, sprinkler rotor. Sound is a little choppy. The video is a little choppy, and that's a 240. Uh, my videos don't show up at 144, which I have seen on certain other videos here and there, but that may play even better for what it's worth, and I, I certainly doubt this is even going to come up uh, uh, anywhere near full screen <laughs> for anything. But anyway, on to the project now. Okay, I have a picture loaded, and I have set it to print to fax. I have the fax machine connected with just a plain telephone wire into the lonesome modem jack that is never used any longer. Uh, it's been a long time since I did this, so we'll uh, just do it to ABC, and the fax number will be, I don't know yet, oh, you gotta. So we'll put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Next. We don't want a cover page. We want to send it now. We'll hit preview just for shits and giggles. See how long that'll take to process. I don't even know if the modem in this thing works, so we'll see, but that's allegedly what it might look like. And we'll close that. We'll hit finish. But before I do that, I want to set this ready. I'm going to hit the hook button. Now it says telephone and start. It says receiving. We'll click finish. And we'll click finish there. And we'll wait to see if this thing even works. Probably going to complain there's no dial tone. Oh, you can. I'll have to fix that. Alright. Okay, I had to go into control panel for the modem and uh, uncheck the box that says wait for dial tone. We'll see if anything is going to happen. It probably still won't work. I have an incorrect telephone number in there. Not that it really matters, but. Let's try it again. It says dialing. I guess that forgets after a while, so we'll change it back to receiving. I'm sure it's not going to work, but we'll try it anyway. Sending fucking page. No shit. That's a, a good sound. It's slow, but it's a good sound. This is going to take a long time. I see paper moving. We'll come back. The starting of an image. Right along with banner information, which I can turn off. But we'll let that print, and we'll come back when it's done. It's near five minutes later. It's picked up speed, somehow. I think because of the lighter areas don't take as long to transmit. Now it's slowed back down because it's darker in those areas. But I have another print job I'm going to send to it in a minute. Uh, we'll just wait for this one to finish here and uh, see what happens. Should be getting on almost done. The sound, of course, you're hearing is that stepping the paper one uh, line at a time. Now, the line is whatever the resolution of the fax machine is and how wide the actual uh, printhead uh, element is, which is about uh, pixel wide. So but you can just barely see it move. Grainy as all hell.
but we are getting there. There it is. Yeah, I'm using that currently upstairs. I built that many years ago. Oh, I just got the ta-da message. That's even better. On to the next print job. Here's the start of the next print job. I set it to receive. Obviously, this is a somewhat manual process because you have to hit the hook button and then the start button. It makes different sounds. Now it's going to slow down, <laughs> but you can tell, look, you can tell, I think that's supposed to be me also. <laughs> You've seen and heard of people, uh, if you look on the YouTube, of actually putting, uh, uh, you know, printing this stuff out on dot matrix printers. I figured I'd do a little something different here. Not that I, uh, not that people haven't done this, I just haven't actually looked for it. But uh, we'll let this one print out and I'll show you that. So here is my finished print job, or a reasonable facsimile thereof. <laughs> so there's my YouTubes, and uh, yeah, I mean it, it looks like uh, it's there. The text is kind of readable, you know, it's not bad. This paper, I have no idea how old it is, it probably has turned, but uh, it is there. And uh, you can send uh, documents to your fax machine as such, and uh, just for something to do on a Saturday afternoon.